Oh, I'm really good, man. I, I love seeing you in season three. It was awesome to see the character of Ron back at it again. Yeah, man. It was good to be back. Yeah. Right. How are you? Good, good. Just hanging in there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let's get uh, right into it. So how did you um get the role of Ron on Cobra Kai? Uh, just, you know, the usual process. Um, the... Anytime production is looking to cast actors, they will send a breakdown out of, you know, character descriptions, age range, sometimes sex, race, uh, all that stuff. Sometimes it's open. Uh, right. A lot of times it is. And, uh, and then those casting breakdowns will go to the casting directors. The casting directors will send those to the casting agents. And then the casting agents will look at their talent pool and see who they have that fits the descriptions and we'll get auditions. So... Um, I had auditioned for, I think, three other roles uh, in season one before I uh, booked Ron. Oh, um, but yeah, just, you know, usual, the usual route. What roles were those, like the other roles you um, auditioned for? Uh, it, it doesn't matter. I think uh, uh, booking Ron was the, yeah. the role that I was meant to have. And I think that the other actors that had those, that, that booked those other roles were perfect for them. And, yeah. uh, so, you know. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, and and, and the, the you know to that point, um, a lot of times uh, the audition process is you know yes it's a, it's about like um, you know level of skill to a certain extent, but really it's there's so many other factors that go into play. I mean, it, it on camera especially, uh, usually the character has like a, a you know a personal essence of who you are, and so. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times this, the stuff that we book, whatever actor we're, you're talking about, um, it's, you know, just a, a magical, mystical, perfect match for just that person. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't want to steal any thunder from anybody else on the show. Yeah, I like that. It's uh, very honorable. I think Mr. Miyagi would be very proud, right? Um, but yeah, so it's very cool. Um, so, you know, how did you, like, get into the role of Ron? Was there anything, like, you know, certainly that you did? Um, was was this, like, your first big role? I remember seeing you on Raising Dion, too, as uh, the principal, which was pretty cool. So, But bes before Cobra Kai, because I know Raising Dion, I think 2019, right? Uh, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. I think so, well, did you have any, like, big roles before Cobra Kai? Um, you know, I've done some other stuff. Uh, I primarily, I mean, I've been an actor since, you know, middle school, really. I think oh, I did wow. my first, my first play when I was 11. Um, and I've got a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in theater. Uh, so I've been doing theater for, for decades. Uh, and then, um, you know, the film and television industry, because of these tax incentives that the state of Georgia provides, um, really just blew up. Uh, and that's partially because there were other states in the South east like north carolina and florida and louisiana they dropped their tax cuts and so the state of georgia was just able to absorb all of that work in the southeast into uh our state and that happened around 2014 ish uh, at least when i was aware of it so i think by 25th i started trying to get an agent and by 2015 i had an agent um and i you know i, I booked some other stuff over the years uh, and book some things since Cobra Kai, but I think at the time, um, Cobra Kai and Raising Dion were like the two uh, yeah. biggest, two biggest roles I've ever had. <laughs> that, that was awesome, uh, man. So, what was it like, like when they asked you to come back for season three? I bet that must have been pretty cool, right? Especially, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It was awesome, uh, and you know, with uh, an actor uh, with. Considering the size of my role, uh, I'm, you know, I'm a co-star, right. not a guest star and not a star. So there's sort of a three tiered system and I'm sort of um, on the lower end of that. So it's not like, you know, I was getting all the scripts and in meetings and, you know, on the phone with the big three every day or anything. Yeah. I just got a, got an email from my um, agent probably a couple of weeks before we shot. And she just said, hey, they, they would like to have you on set for Cover Kai on this day. Uh, here's your offer. Here's your contract. And, um, you know, and so then it's my job just to rearrange my life and make sure that I can get in on that day to fit their schedule. It's not like there's any sort of, 
negotiation. You know, you get called into work. There's no negotiation. You just say, yeah, I'll be there on the third or whatever. Um, but yeah, that was a, a really exciting thing. And I'm, you know, I grew up watching the Karate Kid. I love Cobra Kai. I would be a super fan of this show, even if I wasn't on it. Um, so it's just, it just continues to be a blessing and an honor and a privilege. And, um, and also on top of that, everyone on set for that show is just so cool from the big three all the way down the crew, uh, Frank, the costume guy, just everybody, the, 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 the chef on set that works in the cafeteria, like everybody's just awesome. So it's, it's, it's a joy to be back always. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, like, I feel like when a show is really good, like a lot of the times that is due to like everyone from the janitor to, you know, the people cleaning up the set to the big producers, the actors, and like, you know, there has to be good chemistry in there and like no tension. It seems like, you know, Cobra Kai, everyone loves to be there. Everyone, you know, loves being on set. Everyone on the set is just, you know, so nice with each other. No like bickering goes on and it's just, yeah, and, and really, it's just, you know, think about it like uh, any other job, um, you know, that that starts with leadership and flows down the, the pyramid. So the fact that the, the big three and Billy and Ralph and all the other stars of the show uh, uh, have chosen to be so of a, above and beyond awesome just uh, enhances the experience for everybody, you know? Um, <laughs> now all of the seasons are great. Like I, I can't personally decide on which one's my favorite because of how good each of the seasons are, but do you right. have a favorite season? Uh, I mean, no, I mean, the, 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 the cool thing about it is that they're all different too, you right. know? Um, I mean that they had to establish this world in the first season and then really kick it up a notch in the second season and then figure out newer and bigger and better ways to still blow our minds in the third season and I, I think you know one of the things I like the most about the third season is that they were they were able to do so many things that we kind of expected at the end of the day I mean seeing Kumiko and Chosen like was you know we we heard really early on they didn't keep it a secret that uh they went to Okinawa and actually shot in Okinawa we heard that like at the very beginning of interviews with Ralph and stuff. So it's kind of easy to assume that we we're probably gonna run into some Karate Kid 2 characters. Um, but, you know, then they bring in like the little girl that uh, Daniel saves from the typhoon. Like that was so unexpected and so beautiful. Uh, and, you know, same thing with Allie with an eye. Like we all knew she was gonna come back yeah. at some point or we hoped, I did. Yeah. Um, but the fact that they did it in such a, uh, creative out of left field way uh, everything was unpredictable um, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time so I, I, I love them all um, but uh, you know I think season three I've probably only seen like maybe three times all the way through so it's still like um, probably the most fun for me to watch at this point but I, I love them all I love the show like I said I'm, I'm a huge fan I, I would be no matter what me too dude. i'm a super fan and i mean like the cool thing too is a lot of times when you get these reboots of shows a lot of times they're horrible and they just try and go off of the original success but with what cobra kai does which is i think the reason so many people connect to it is because they twist it and it's different than like what you would expect like miguel's story in the first season is very similar to daniel with getting bullied but then you have a johnny who's just this politically <laughs> incorrect insane teacher and he's yelling at all these kids and so it's it's a amazing story in a new way and the thing too with season three was them bringing the characters in like sometimes when shows do that especially with like the few reboots of shows that are, are successful they just come in just so people you know can be happy that they got to see their favorite back but it ties into the plot like chosen uh teaching daniel this technique it ties into the finale and almost saves his life when he's fighting crease because then he's able to numb him and then ali ties into the big cliffhanger for the end of the season telling johnny and daniel that they're uh more alike than they think so yeah yeah i've, I've heard the big three say in a lot of interviews and i've and i've heard them say it to me uh, personally with the you know with the periods of time that I've been able to spend with them over the years yeah. that um, you know their 
just as big karate kid fans as anybody else but because of that they they won't ever do anything even if it's just like adding an old song from the original soundtrack or something like that they're not going to do anything unless it helps move the plot forward in a in a unique and interesting way and helps um helps the show be better as opposed to just being there for its own sake like hey we've got to get elizabeth shoe in here and then you know once they do that uh you know they they fail at the most important part like they 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 never do that mm -hmm. um and i thought uh, another cool thing about season three is that they were able to uh sort of hint at things but then not to go there and go in a more interesting direction instead uh I, I you know a lot of fans on twitter and stuff had talked about how like what was Allie's way into the show going to be and a lot of people said like well she's like she'll be a doctor and she'll make miguel walk again she'll perform the surgery uh you know so when johnny goes into the hospital with that check from his dad or when he steals the thing from his dad uh they sort of show us this blonde woman with her back to us and there was a moment where i thought like oh man that's that dally is going to be the doctor but then she turns around and it's not <laughs> and it's not so, yeah. My my dad was screaming at me like I would have been on my phone during that scene because I was like it's it's not out they're not doing this too predictable right so mm -hmm. he sees the blonde lady and he goes look look it's out and I'm like no and then she turns around and I was right and I'm like gotcha you sucker because that's what I love because they baited you so so hard there uh, where would you like to see the character of Ron go next I mean do you do you think there's a potential to see Ron in season four even uh, further seasons like season five. I mean, I would hope so. Right. Uh, you know, like, it's not really up to me. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that'd be awesome. He, that Ron should the whole committee should get their own spinoff. You know. Um, but I don't know, man. I'll, I I I love being a part of the Karate Kid universe, and so anytime that they, you know, want me to come in and help tell their stories, like I'm there. Um, I I I don't know anything for sure, uh, and you know, with the way showbiz works, like until i until i see myself in the thing on the screen like i don't count on anything because there's so many there's so many variables out there and it's just a it's a tough business um but that being said i it it, it looks to, like i don't know anything but it looks to me like season four is pointing towards a, a tournament yeah. and um if there's a tournament there's going to be a, an all valley committee there to preside over it so um, you know, I, I got my fingers. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm expecting to see Ron. Maybe we see Ron join a dojo, maybe even. And like, or maybe we see Ron, like, because the All Valley Committee knows about Crease because in the first season, the reason um, Johnny was able to get the dojo in the tournament was because he said John Crease was dead presenting to the yep. committee. So maybe now, you know, Crease will be able to enter this tournament and then he beats up Ron. Maybe that's how it goes. That'd be awesome. I feel like, <laughs> right? Like, I, I would love that. That's a good direction to take it. And I feel like that's a reasonable direction. I feel like that's a direction that moves the plot forward nicely and has, has a good moment for the characters. I don't disagree. Uh, I would, I mean, if I had the ability to like sit in the writer's room and, and suggest things, which I do not, uh, <laughs> but if I did, um, you know, I would probably mention that probably all all four of the all valley committee members have karate experience they they were probably in the tournament back in their days yeah. and that's why they're so you know supportive of karate now so that could you know that idea could lead to all sorts of storytelling situations i don't know man i'm down for anything like i said if they uh they call and they want me to come in i'm i'm there yeah uh, anytime that's awesome. So where do you see season four going? Do you see potential for Mike Barnes, Terry Silver, which was the big tease at the end of the season, uh, sure. in Griffith, Sean Cannon coming in? Uh, how do you see, you know, season four? Uh, well, what do you expect to see in season four and maybe even future seasons? I would expect it to be like now I've, I've, I've talked to um, like when we were shooting uh, episode eight in season three, um, you know, that scene shooting it probably took like, I don't know, three hours, four hours or something like that. It, it, you know, for even for something that's seemingly not that long, 
mm-hmm. with all of the angles that they have to shoot, all of the coverage, and sometimes they have to, you know, uh, move stuff around. Um, I don't know if we necessarily had to do this for our scene, but a lot of times they'll have to do something called flipping the room where, um, you know, they'll shoot coverage maybe over my shoulder getting you and your, well, they're getting your coverage over my shoulder, right? And then uh, as they're shooting that, the, the cameras are pointed at you, right? So back here behind these cameras, that's the crew and lighting and all sorts of shit back there. So when they flip the room to shoot over your shoulder to get my coverage, they've got to move all that stuff back behind you, right? right? Mm-hmm. So, and that takes a lot of time. Usually you'll shoot all the coverage from one side and then they'll tell first team to stand down and uh, stand-ins will come in for lighting and stuff like that. And flipping the room might take, uh, you know, an hour, depending on what they're doing. So anyway, uh, it probably took us like three or four hours to shoot that scene. So I spent a lot of time just sort of sitting around with um, Ralph and Courtney uh, in between takes. And I was asking Ralph about the show. And uh, at the time, um, I, I don't remember at the time if leaving YouTube was a thing or not. I think they were still just, I want to say, yeah. as far as I knew, I mean, Ralph as a producer probably knew more than me, but as, as far as I knew, it was just still on YouTube and that's the way it was going to stay. Yeah. And I asked him about, was like, okay, in a perfect world, let's say season three is just as successful as the first two seasons. Um, you know, what do you guys think about the show going forward? And Ralph had said, if that's the case, we, we would like to probably go like six or seven seasons. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I, I hope so. I'll watch six or seven seasons. I'll, um, I'll watch Twenty seasons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Me too, man. Um, but but I, I don't know. You know, that's that's the great thing about the show is that they will do things like, um, you know, tell us that they're going to Okinawa, which of course leads us to assume we're going to meet Kumiko and we're going to meet Chosen and maybe some other folks, which we did. But they're such good writers that they do all of that stuff that we expect and want in a really crafty and unique way. So like, sure, we could totally meet Terry Silver, uh, but like, you know, just like Johnny, like we, I I grew up watching Karate Kid hating Johnny for two movies, uh, but now I don't. So, uh, you know, they're able to to flip the script and reinvent people and um, put them in different scenarios. And so I I don't know, who knows? My, My short answer is, sure we'll probably see terry silver and mike barnes like why the hell wouldn't we but um but however that happens is going to be just mind-blowingly amazing to watch and a total surprise and really joyful i wonder if we could even see like julie pierce on um, hillary swank in there which would be interesting too and i actually have I that. yeah i actually have another theory about the character of ron maybe ron is stingray's dad or brother's <laughs> I think I think Stingray and I are about the same age, so uh, I don't know if that's maybe you guys keep on, but I mean, friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could be brothers. Maybe maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. It'd be interesting, but I, I'm so psyched for season four, and hopefully, fingers crossed, if all things go to the plan, you know, the wait won't be as long as season three because it was what a year and a half. Obviously, that had to do with a lot of the issues between like YouTube and um, Cobra Kai and you know, in the long run, I'm very thankful for it because otherwise we would have had this huge cliffhanger at the end of season three and just never gotten anything else. And now right. we might get up to uh, seven seasons and now we're going to get the fourth season, most likely a fifth, I would imagine. Cause I yeah, I mean, hope so. Like, uh, you know, like I said, it's, you know, you can't count on anything in show business. Um, and we, you know, we saw that with Cobra Kai being on YouTube, like, we almost lost it because YouTube said uh, that they would renew them for a third season, but they weren't going to do a fourth season. Uh, and, and it was only because uh, Sony and uh, Will Smith and whoever, I think there's like three entities that have partial rights to the Karate Kid franchise and to Cobra Kai. Um, all of those uh, entities were able to get permission to shop the show out to, to other streamers. But YouTube... I mean, they could have said no, you know, uh, so, you know, I don't know, but I hope the show goes on. Like you said, you know, 20 seasons would be awesome. 20 seasons would be good. So is Will Smith still a producer going into season four? Yeah, he owns, uh, as far as I understand it, 
in some way, shape, or form, uh, the Smith family as a as a corporation own part of the rights uh, because that's how they were able to do Jaden Smith's uh, remake of the original movie. Right. Yeah. That's, so, that's and they cool. still own part of it. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, I, I've always liked that movie. I mean, it's a it's a good movie. I mean, it's it's you know it follows a lot of the beats from uh, the original Karate Kid while also doing yeah. things different. So it's a cool movie, but um. I'm, I'm I'm very happy we got season three. Like you know, I mean, even though it was a week early, it felt like such a difference compared to like having a week. And I actually predicted like the I don't know if you saw the trailer where Johnny's changing the date. Like yeah, I I, I predicted that that was going to be him messaging Allie, where it's like nah, too long. He's like, mm. and I was like, yeah, he's definitely messaging Allie on Facebook and that. And and I'm watching it. I'm with my dad. I'm like yes, yes, yes. I was right. And the whole time. I, like, I was cheering, crying through the whole season. Like when Miguel starts to uh, tap his foot at the uh, concert and I'm a bit, yeah, yeah. we ain't gonna take it. So that was pretty cool to see him in there. And just seeing him stomp the foot, I was cheering up and down because I binged the whole thing the day it came out with my dad. Like, yes, yes. And then when he starts walking and like the baby strap looking thing, that was just so awesome, man. Yeah, it was great. It was so good. Yeah, I watched it. Uh, um. Yeah, I watched it. My, my family and I sat down and, and went through the whole thing the first day it was out and watched it on the first. Loved it. Yeah. Uh, you were you were talking about the like potential release dates for season four. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, caveat, this is just me guessing. Mm-hmm. It's not like John Hurwitz is, you know, texting me every day or something like that. Um, but just thinking about the schedule, the shooting schedule and the editing schedule of season one and two, before the the hiccup between YouTube and Netflix, um, they it takes them about four months to shoot, and then usually we get to see the show like about five months later. Mm-hmm. So um, they're going to start shooting season four like soon, like mid January, like next week. Yeah. Uh, and and I just I I know that because I saw actors on Instagram. Shola was talking about getting his hair cut, and um, <laughs> I, I'm uh, social media okay. friends with social media friends with Frank the costumer and I saw him posting pictures about flying to Atlanta and stuff like that. So shooting is imminent. So if you think they're going to shoot about four months, January, February, March, April, February, March, April, May, and then June, July, August, September, October, November, um, you know, we could be looking at like a November release, maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later. I don't know. Something like that. That's my guess. I don't know. <laughs> Just a guess, but dude, if we, that would be huge, huge. If we, if I got to see it like by fall of next year, and the cool thing with Cobra Kai too is like it's been there with me for three different schools because now I'm eighth grade. The first season came out when I was in fifth grade, so I was in elementary school. Now uh, the second and third seasons came out when I was in middle school, so now into high school and possibly even college if it goes on long enough. So Cobra, yeah. like a big uh, part of my childhood it's one of the things that I always just look forward to anytime I get sad or something you know bothers me it's like I'm like oh the next season of Cobra Kai is coming out whether that's a year to the release date or a day to the release date. I'm just like yeah Cobra Kai is coming I know I'm getting the next season let's go I'm so excited and I mean I'm sure it was very exciting to all the actors to see that you know Netflix picked it up because I mean, obviously YouTube has a big platform, but not as many people um, were so probably like watching it on YouTube as they were on Netflix. So now I think it's the number one show on Netflix in a bunch of countries, which is really- Yeah. Really- yeah, and it was too when, uh, when season two, well, when the, the first two seasons dropped on Netflix initially, um, we, we stayed in the, the top 10 in the world for a couple of weeks. And I, I uh, wouldn't expect this situation to be any different. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, talking about Cobra Kai being such a, an important part for your of your life for such a long time, I was able to uh, when we were shooting uh, episode seven in season one. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of footage and a lot of different angles, and uh, so you know, I sat there with it, it. Probably took us most of the day to shoot that. That might have been like a six, seven, eight hour yeah. thing. Um, so I spent a lot of that time just sort of sitting there with Ralph. You know, hurry up and wait. Uh, and I was able to tell Ralph this story that the, the reason that I'm such a huge Karate Kid fan is because 
uh, Karate Kid came out in the summer of 1984. And that was the first year that my dad had uh, gotten a new job and my family had to move to a different state. Oh, like and Daniel. I had to be, a, exactly. I had to be a new kid in a new school. Right. Um, and it was a really rough transition, but we moved at the beginning of the summer and there weren't many kids like right in my uh, vicinity. Uh, and I had a little brother, but he was, I was in fourth grade. He was, that would have put him in first grade, I think. So the age gap there is pretty big. Right. Um, so I spent that whole summer just like riding my bike around by myself. And I had the Karate Kid soundtrack on vinyl and I recorded it onto a cassette tape and had it on my big Walkman with the big shoulder strap. And I just rode my bike around and listened to that album over and over and over again. And so, uh, you know, Karate Kid really like, uh, in a lot of ways, like got me through that summer. And, uh, you know, I told Ralph about that and, and he said that that was really cool. And it was cool that the Karate Kid means so much to so many people. And then I didn't have the guts to do it when I came back for, uh, the tournament in season one but i did have the guts to do it when i came back for season three i, I still have that record and i brought it in and uh and rob signed it for me and, and wrote oh, that's, name on it. But, oh, that's, yeah, that's, 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 yeah. that's an awesome story man it's very cool because obviously relatable to the karate kid now after you know youtube cut it out i believe there was something saying i remember seeing a news article that came out saying like youtube will let you like move to another place as long as you have the deal and everything set in stone besides netflix was there anyone else close to um picking up cobra kai i don't know specifically i mean i i read interviews and articles probably the same things that you read and i think that um you know when they shopped it out to all streamers uh, i'm sure that that included yeah. you know hulu and amazon prime and you know all the other big ones mm -hmm. uh and probably some smaller ones um but uh, I, I, I would assume that, that they were hoping for, you know, Netflix or Hulu yeah. or Amazon Prime. I mean, those are the big ones, you know. Right, right. Um, but, I, you know, I don't really know. I'm glad that it worked out on Netflix, it, you know. No, me, me too, definitely. Um, now, I know there was a lot of talk about spinoffs. Are there any spinoffs that, like, would be interesting to you from, like, you know, Cobra Kai, Karate Kid? I know... Like with the flashbacks of Crease, a lot of people talking about like a young Crease and a young Terry Silver show. Are there any uh, spinoff shows that would be interesting to you? I, I mean, I think those would be really cool. I, I think that uh, um, another interesting option would be, and maybe it's not even something immediate, but I would imagine that at some point in time, as as much as Ralph and Billy are both like iconic <laughs> characters as Johnny and Daniel, they're could possibly be possibly be some point in time in the future where they might actually like not want to uh, play those roles anymore. Uh, so it could be that they just sort of uh, retire a little bit and the and the kids uh, move into more prominent roles. Um, you know, who knows, man? It's, it's like a, a a new Star Wars trilogy. You know, yeah. they, they they will let. You know, we we don't see Luke Skywalker for a couple of decades. So when he comes back, like it's different, new and exciting. There's other stuff going on and there's other characters. So, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? They've they've created a really rich universe of characters. So I, I could see a lot of things uh, coming up, you know, a, an all valley uh, committee origin story. We're all I, I, like dude, young and I, I've got like a six pack and a full head of hair. I, I, and I've got, you know, karate. Uh, be cool. Tell the yeah. big three, man. That'd be yeah, I will. I will. We, we just if got you're watching this. That's a great spinoff idea, guys. Josh, um, John, if you're watching this, remember all the Valley, all <laughs> Karate Committee show. But yeah, I mean, I I would imagine like since there's going to be an All Valley most likely uh, at the end of season four. Um, I would imagine the All Valley Committee is going to be in there. I'd imagine the character of Ron would be in there. I mean, it, it makes sense to me. So, uh, me too, man. I, I know that uh, the only thing concrete that I know is that, and like I said, this was years ago, and I've also said multiple times that showbiz is very cruel. So who knows? But when we wrapped uh, the, the last turn, the first tournament, the previous tournament, um, at the end of episode 10 in the first season, uh, that last day, we were there for a, a week when we shot that tournament. And when we wrapped that 
episode, the show was basically wrapped. The only thing that they had left to shoot were some things that they kept having to push because of the weather. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the show is supposed to take place in the Valley, but they shoot in Georgia. So a lot of times you just sort of, uh, just kind of roll with it. Like we're in the, when they're in the woods and stuff and there's fall foliage, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you really see that in the Valley, but what, you know, whatever it's, it's yeah. magic. It's TV show. Uh, but there was some stuff they had to shoot outside that they kept having to push because it was cold. It started snowing when we were shooting the tournament. <laughs> so um, all I, I believe all of the stuff um, uh, with Tanner and Ralph, uh, with the training stuff and all that in the woods, uh, you know, on the tree, I think all that stuff got pushed for a while. And then definitely... Um, when uh, Yasmin has the tries to have the party at the beach, mm -hmm. uh, and the the cobras spoil it. <laughs> if you go back and rewatch that scene, all those poor kids are freezing their asses off because it's like forty degrees outside. Oh wow, and, really? And they're all in like, well, I I think some of them are wearing sweatshirts too, and like exactly. It's and I'm like, it gets, it gets cool at night. It gets cool at night in the valley, you know. I don't know. Yeah, there's like bonfires and stuff. Yeah, they're freezing. It's super cold outside. So, but anyway. Uh, they, so the show was basically wrapped and uh, John came up to us afterwards and we were, you know, given the big three hugs and stuff and saying goodbye and thanks. And, and John was like, well, you know, and this is season one. So he didn't, nobody he didn't knew anything. know how big it was going to be. Right. But he was like, Hey, you know, if, if, you know, the series continues, like we would like it to, there's not going to be a tournament every season, but when there is a tournament, you guys are the tournament committee and you'll be there. So, um, but you know, that was in 20, 17 or 2018 or something so i don't know and and, and they also just surprise us with their writing it, it we may not need to assume that the tournament happens at the end of the season it might be yeah. in the first damn episode I mean, who knows you know yeah right i mean like the thing too is like i was expecting to see this tournament at the end of season three and it was also disappointing and really happy to me because now i have something to look forward to and yeah. the final fight was cool seeing you know, <clears throat> Shadow in the first episode with um, Chris going to Daniel, you will fight me. It's inevitable. And then he's like, I told you this was inevitable. And then he's just fighting him, which and he's using the Kaita technique, which was really cool. Um, so how do you see like the show eventually wrapping up? And then how do you see uh, the season four finale going? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I, I, I don't know. My, I, it, I guess, I guess my answer is my brain doesn't really work that way. Like I'm not a, uh, you know, I, I would consider myself like a, a good actor, but, um, the way that I like to help tell stories is that like somebody that's smarter than me and a better writer than I am will come up with that stuff and tell me what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> I can just go in and, you know, and do my thing and help tell the story, uh, I don't know. I mean, I always thought that a, 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 a union of Daniel and Johnny was inevitable. Um, so I always sort of thought maybe that's the way it will ultimately end. But that's how season we're seeing that now. So I, I, who knows? You know, I don't know. That's the but that's the thing that we all love about the show is that it's uh, it's just so crafty. That there's no there's rarely a moment when I'm watching any episode of Cobra Kai where I think like, oh, well, I know what's going to happen here. You know, you never do. They always flip the script. <laughs> right. Um, have you ever seen Big Bang Theory? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know the character of Bert on Big Bang Theory? Uh, which one is he? I've, I've, just, I've seen it here and there. Yeah, but. <laughs> it's funny because he looks exactly like you. He's he's like one of the guys. He's a very like, he's a reoccurring character, but he works at like <laughs> um, the college. <laughs> he looks exactly like you. It's just, nice. Buddy, I was I was gonna ask you if like you ever get mistaken for him because you guys look identical to each other. He also has a new show, um, True TV. But I, I Raising Dion is also getting uh, season two. So I, I'm, would you expect to see uh, Mr. Campbell back in that? I hope so, man. I, I haven't heard anything from him, and uh, I know that they're uh, ramping up production really soon too. Um, they were in pre-production. Uh, right before COVID. Um, so, you know, there's writing happening and meetings and, you know, scouting locations and all that stuff and getting ready to go. And then COVID happened. Um, so they had to shut all that down. 
Um, so uh, they're going to start shooting soon. And, and it's the same sort of roughly the same sort of schedule for a, a streaming type show. It's basically like shooting a, 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 a very long film. Um, as opposed to, you know, I've got friends that are on network shows around here and they'll work, you know, six, seven, eight months straight. Uh, a, a streaming show like Cobra Kai or Raising Dion has a shorter schedule. So, uh, you know, they're starting to shoot in January too. Maybe I get a call, uh, you know, uh, maybe not. I don't know. I hope so. That'd be cool. I love being on that show and I yeah. love that show. Uh, a funny story about that show is that, um, uh, you know, we shot that a couple of years ago, but at the time, um, this, the, the school that Dion's school, that is Dion's school, right. was actually at least three different schools in the Atlanta area. Oh, but wow. when they shot the X, not, not the scene where I get tripped by the invisible lady later on in that <laughs> season, but when I meet Dion and accuse him of stealing that watch and take him to the office and argue with his mom and all that stuff. Yeah. They shot that at my kid's actual school. Oh, wow. Those, that's those awesome. exteriors and those interiors were at my kid's school at the time. Oh, that's um, awesome. Oh, it was great, dude. Like I got to walk to work. I was a, like a, a mile from my house. It was awesome. I mean, getting to walk to work is really cool. I mean, thank you so much for coming on the YouTube channel, man. It really means so much to me. I, my pleasure. Hopefully, uh, we see Ron season four. I'm fingers crossed. I would imagine, especially with the All Valley, maybe we'll see them in three episodes, or maybe even more than one, two. You know, because I feel like they'd have a big role to play, especially with the story they're going to go for. You know, so uh, big three. If you're watching this, give the All Valley Council a big role. You know, <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks, bud. Have a great day. Thank you, man. You too. All right. Bye.